Okay, this rusty chain is giving me quite the challenge. Um, and I've been working on it and messing around with it with different methods. And I tried this method. I think I kind of like it. Um, the first thing I did was just go to the internet and find a picture of a rusty chain that I thought looked similar. And I think this one is a pretty good approximation of the type of chain that we're looking at in this photo. Um, so I'm going to let this inspire me on my colors where before I was maybe not putting enough rust in. I was trying to leave the chain chain color. Um, so we've got whites and reds, brown, orange, some light tan or dark yellow. Um, so those are the kind of colors and we can see like the red is in the shaded areas um, and then the highlighted areas are more of this yellow orange color. Um, so I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, one thing I was having a problem with is trying to color with uh, just a regular soft brush like I normally do. I was having problems with that. It's just too, uh, it's just too uniform. It's, it's too, uh, let me get a new layer here. It's not giving me enough control over where I place it. I would have to zoom way in, bring my size way down, and place individual spots of color. And that, that's just too much work. I don't want to do that. So uh, in Photoshop, let's get this blank white layer. Now I just have a empty layer on top of the white so that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, in Photoshop you have brush controls that are just pretty awesome if you get to play with them. Um, and I'm going to go straight away to this scatter brush because I'm thinking I need to scatter color across there instead of it being just a solid brush. I need spots of color. And it's, you know, this is the way it comes out. Not too great. Uh, but you have right here next to where you choose your brush, you have the brush palette. If for some reason that's not there, you can go to Window Brush and it will open this same palette. Uh, <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do, well when you're on Brush Tip Shape you can also choose your brush from here instead of over here. And then we want to go to Shape Dynamics and this is telling you this is what this stroke looks like. So I want to maybe change up that size a little bit. Just turn that up. I don't want to turn it all the way to 100%, but somewhere right around 50% or so. Then I want to turn on scattering. And this one defaulted to 467. Maybe that's where I had it in the past. I don't know, but you can change that. And you can see what happens when you move that. It, it scatters your brush uh, brush marks that have been um, changed on the size. It's a whole lot of just playing around with these different controls. Uh, I don't want to play with texture or dual brush right now, but I do want to play with color dynamics, and this is where. The fun happens when you have a foreground and background color over here and here we have foreground background jitter. So this will jitter between your foreground color and your background color and all of a sudden you have a randomized um, pattern of color. I love it. Uh, if I add hue, I don't know if it'll do anything with black and white. Let's turn that back down for a minute. So we're going to do rust. So I'm going to go straight for my dark brownish 
orange color here and then um, switch to the other one and let's get more up in the red maybe and see what happens. Now let's see what it looks like. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we turn up the hue jitter. Then it'll it's introducing a little bit of a yellowish orange looks like. Let's turn it up higher. Oh now we're getting some purples. I'm not real sure I want purple in there. So let me turn that back down a little bit. So we're getting some yellows, browns, reds. It's pretty good. Not too bad. Um, it may be just a little bit too pink for me, so I'm just going to turn that hue jitter down just a little more. And we'll see how that looks. Now let's switch back over to our rusty chain. And on a new soft light layer, I'm going to just start scattering this color across the chain. And I know that it's going everywhere. Um, that's fine. I'm going to include more than what I need because I'm going to add a mask and then bring it back in. And I've tried different blending modes and you know, you're welcome to try different ones. Uh, I don't like what overlay does. I don't like what multiply does. The soft light seemed the best for me, but it's too light. So I duplicate that and that pumps it up a little bit, pumps up that coverage. I think this is a little too red maybe. Um, I'm going to add a new layer. Also change it to soft light. And then I'm going to go in here and go more toward the orange. The orangey brown. I'm going to keep that same background color. I'm just going to add this on top. And maybe I want to change the opacity here. Tone that second layer down a little bit. It's a definitely an experiment. And this does not look like what I did before because I'm not picking the exact same colors. Um, let me try some brighter color here. Ooh, that's looking more orange, isn't it? I'm shooting for a reddish orange color. All right, let's see. New soft light layer. This time I'm going to go up here and pale blue it's not bad not bad not bad um, let's get a new layer and I'm going to go into the red and I'm going to leave the background white. Let's see what that does. That punches it up quite a bit. So I am just picking random colors and experimenting. The great thing is it's um, everything's on its own layer so if you don't like it you can delete it. If um, you just want to change the opacity, you can. 
You can mess with the blending modes. I kind of like that. Um, do another one. This time I'm going to stick with black and white. See what that does. Kind of put some noise in there maybe. Rust is pretty noisy. I think at the moment I have enough colors in there. I'm going to I've got my top layer chosen. Hold down the shift key and choose the last layer of color. Then I'm going to right click here and choose group from layers. I'm going to go ahead and name this group. It's a chain. And then I'm going to um, add a layer mask which is that third icon over. Double click the mask to open up its properties and invert the mask. Now everything that is black is hidden. Everything that is white will show. I'm going to go back to my regular soft brush and I'm going to turn the hardness up a little bit because this is a hard object but I'm not going to go all the way 100% hard brush. And Then I'm going to start bringing my chain in. And uh, I'm not going to color in the whole chain while you're watching, but I do want to get a little bit here done so you can see it. This seems to be a little bit too red to me maybe. Not quite bright enough or orange enough. But I can always go in and adjust my colors. And I can even add layers on top of this. Give it a little punch. It's not too bad. Um, take a new layer here. I'm just strictly experimenting. I'm going to grab a um, kind of a, I don't know what that is, kind of a, a orangey yellow color. And just a regular brush, a soft brush. And just kind of add a little bit of that to the top. Kind of spice up that color a little bit. It's a little too red. And I'm leaving the shaded parts the redder color because if, if you remember when we looked at this up close here where it's in the shadows it's more red and the parts that are in the light are more of this yellow orange color so I'm trying to duplicate that somewhat duplicate it I went too far here Erase it back. I don't know. I think it's not bad. Let me know what you think. It's definitely fun, just playing with all of the random scattered colors. We're usually so controlled in what we're doing when we're colorizing. It's kind of fun just experimenting and throwing some different colors on there. Um, I hope this gives you some ideas and uh, hope you experiment and see what you can come up with. Uh, let me know if I can help in any way. Thank you.